I've always been interested in the arts. I, I did a little bit of painting in college, and uh, I, I have found that it doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> so you have to take a real job. Okay, you get a real job. I worked at a grocery store, and night, night crew, putting groceries on the shelf. Man, that was brutal. And all the while, I was still doing my hobby. So I, I took my old truck that was crappy into backyard mechanic. His name was Bing Emerson. He, he was an old guy. He was really funny. And so my wife and I took our truck in there, and I... Uh, standing around waiting for him to swing those wrenches and do his magic. And in the back of the barn, there was this hole in the wall, and there was these bees flying in and out. I said, hey, Bing, you got bees in your wall? He goes, yeah, you can have them if you want them. <laughs> that sounds stupid. But damn, three days later, I was over there opening up his wall and uh, getting stung and seeing what was in there. And I... What I did is, in those two days, I went and got a book. There was no internet at that time. And I read the book, felt knowledgeable enough, found there was a beekeeping supply store here in Fresno, and bought enough gear. Didn't know how to tie my veil on. I tied it on wrong. The bees were stinging the hell out of me. And uh, I went through all the motions and put those in a hive, and three days later, they were dead. But that encouraged me to not be afraid. And uh, f four days later, I found somebody selling some beehives. I bought 13 beehives, and I was off to the races. I think I turned those into 45 beehives, <laughs> and 10 of them died. But you know, you just grow in increments. And so all the time I'm doing these bees, I've still, you know, you do your bees over there, but you're still at home. And when I'm home, I gotta be piddling somewhere. So I'm, my wife calls it piddling. Uh, I call it hobbies. And so I started making violins, you know. I figured I was a good woodworker and I wanted to challenge myself. I was not a good woodworker, but I soon became one after uh, doing violins, you know, all that tedious stuff. So I did some violins. I went to a violin store and showed them my work and I was lacking in some respects. And so I kept working for five years. I kept doing violins and bees. And eventually I quit my day job because the bees started working. And I just kept doing wood. And then I started doing a little silversmithing. I quit doing the violins after five years. Did a little more silversmithing. Kept doing the bees. Did the bees for 30 years. Uh, did silversmithing for a couple. I, did, I had surgery on my back, got laid up. And so for a year, I was recuperating. And so I, I did gemstone faceting. <laughs> Don't ask me why. It was just something I was interested in at the time. And then, so I quit that and still woodworking. And all the while, finding different things that interest me in woodworking. So eventually, the beekeeping kind of pooped out. It uh, ran its course. I priced myself out of the market, and, and the bees got ever and ever curious about the newest and favorite pesticide on the market. And so. After that, I was out of the bee business, and I had already started this wood thing, and I really wasn't making anything. I was just selling wood. I was selling slabs and veneer. And uh, in 2008, <laughs> that market crashed, and all I had left was uh, this big pile of wood. And I told my wife, if that market crashes, uh, uh, I'm gonna turn it all into wood products. And so uh, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> turning it all into wood products, and now I'm just buying more wood to keep fueling the beast. 